Hello and welcome, my name is Meeples, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are flipping through Pink by Kyoko Okazaki. No translator is credited by name. Pink was originally published in 1989, and this English edition was published by Vertical Inc. in 2013. This one-shot Josai manga is rated 18+. Content notes for nudity, sex, sex work, abusive language, and a plot point about an animal's skin being used to make a purse. My second read-through, I first read and reviewed Pink back in 2015. I also reread and re-reviewed her other title, Helter Skelter, back in March. So definitely check that one out for more of a biography slash profile. Although I would like to highlight a comment left by Sucra's library on that Helter Skelter video. Read it into the record, as it were. As it pointed to some of the interesting relationships between mangaka that I didn't know. Quote, I think I mentioned this before, but from what I could dig up, Okazaki was injured so severely from the accident that she is not physically able to make manga. Sad face. I find her career fascinating, and I wish more of her work was licensed. Miyoko Ano was her former assistant, and Erika Sakurazawa worked alongside Okazaki for a while. The three were close friends, which you can definitely tell by their style and the themes in their Josai work. End quote. Which I heartily agree with. What kinds of keywords came to mind reading this manga? Capitalism, city living, rat race, sexuality, survival, escape, unsexy, coming of age, and family. The description over on Goodreads is, quote, Yumiko moonlights as a call girl because her day job doesn't pay enough to feed her pet croc. Haru, an aspiring writer who has nothing to say, sleeps with a woman his mother's age, not just for the money, but to work on his powers of observation. So when Yumi's stepmom turns out to be Haru's sugar mommy, it is time for shenanigans. A little bit of drinking, a little bit of blackmail, and a visit with Croc is enough to change lives and maybe add some color to a comfortable but bland life. Daddy kept Kiko's mom as a pet. She keeps Haru as a pet. I keep Croc as a pet. Am I Yumiko someone else's pet? Is she willing to let someone care for her like that? End quote. To start off, I was extremely excited by how much I enjoyed this reread, as that is certainly not always the case. A very unique manga, everything from the language, the art style, the framing, and the plotline is unlike almost anything else I have ever read. Although if you have any recommendations for similar reads, please do share in the comments. The story of a woman trying to be herself and support herself under the grinding forces of capitalism Obviously coming from a very specific time and place that I'm not terribly knowledgeable about, that did not hinder my interest or enjoyment of Pink in the least. And returning to Pink seven years later, it only feels more relatable. Looking at the representation of gender and sexuality in Pink, it is unsurprisingly pretty straight and binary. That said, I do think there's some very interesting things going on that pushes on the edges of standard cis woman hetero representation. First off, we have the way that bodies, nudity, and sex are represented on the page. TLDR, extremely desexualized. Okazaki lets Yumi just be on the page. And while this is a very sexual story, there is no need to make it sexy, which seems to reflect how Yumi experiences her life. This is, of course, not to say that all sexualization in media is bad. For me, one of the main considerations is consent. Which may sound a bit odd at first, but I certainly appreciate it more when characters who clearly are comfortable with looking sexy, look sexy. In contrast, we often find that creators make space for characters who generally don't dress sexy to be seen by the reader in scenes, like private bedroom scenes, and frame them in ways that are meant to sexually arouse readers. The more one reflects on how common the latter is, I hope the more disgusted you join me in becoming. A bit more important in the case of Pink, I feel like the contrast of sexuality without the sexiness draws more attention to the mechanics of Yumi's life. Not that sexiness can't be smart, but I do think in this case, sexiness could have overpowered every other aspect of this manga very easily. And as I already said, diversity is the spice of life. Certainly not some kind of guide for life. I love the space for mistakes complication, and even bad behavior that Okazaki gives Yumi. She's allowed to be a full person doing the best she can in a complicated world. Another rare thing for women in fiction. (laughs) Similarly, class is certainly laid a lot more bare in pink than what I generally expect. An extremely hardworking and smart person, Yumi still struggles to have a place to live. There's concerns about bills and dignity. 
very refreshing, honestly. Race, as usual in manga, is one note and glossed over. And perhaps I missed something, but I don't recall anything that relates in any way to ability and disability. Although I feel like it wouldn't have been that hard, given everything else going on in the story. To conclude... First time through, I rated this book 5 out of 5 stars, and I think I'm going to leave it there. Not a book for everyone, but certainly one that has stayed with me and will likely continue to bounce around my brain. Bye y'all, keep reading an organized and capitalist depression. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders. Which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.